Hey guys, Brian here. I hope you're doing well and in this lesson I'll be showing you a fingerstyle guitar arrangement of Isn't She Lovely by Stevie Wonder and Isn't He Lovely and Very Wonderful as well. So this is a great song for beginner guitar players who are looking to take their guitar playing, their fingerstyle guitar playing to the next level or if you're an intermediate guitar player and you're looking to expand your fingerstyle guitar technique and arrangement skills. So we learn everything about playing bass and melody playing some chords and some funky bass lines as well and how to keep an arrangement and performance going with a really funky groove and feel so before we go on there is a free pdf that you can download click in the link in the description box below it will take you to my website there's a pdf which has the full tab some practice advice and also um, some arrangement ideas as well that you can use. You can always use it with the video so you can print it out and use it in tandem. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to the channel because that's what life is all about. So you don't miss any more videos about fingerstyle guitar lessons and all things fingerstyle guitar. All right, without further ado, let's get straight into the lesson. Okay, so I'm going to start off this arrangement by showing you the melody and the bass outline to Isn't She Lovely. And this forms the core of not only this arrangement, but all of fingerstyle guitar. Once you get this, the rest of the arrangement comes all about adding your own personal flavors and tastes and really getting creative with it. But practice and learn this part first, and this creates a really strong bass for you to um, launch off from. So we're going to start off with the isn't she lovely, isn't she wonderful, which goes like this. And then Okay, notice I'm only playing two parts, just a one line melody and one line bass note. So the first part is played over C sharp bass line, the C sharp minor chord. So it goes, Isn't she lovely? To the F sharp. Then we go, Isn't she lovely again? And then this time we land on a B bass. And then we land on the E bass. All together, very slowly. C sharp. F sharp. To B. To E. And that repeats again the second time, so almost exactly the same when he goes, Isn't she pretty? Less than one minute old. So we can repeat that again. Is the first verse. Okay, moving on to the chorus now. So we start off with I never thought through love we'd be, which goes like this. So over to the fourth fret, we play the melody. And then you'll pluck the A bass with your thumb. Really pluck it. Okay, don't don't go too hard. <laughs> so one more time. I never thought really let it ring out you know don't 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 play and then stop it like that you really want to hear how the bass and melody interact then we go through love we'd be and that takes you to the G sharp okay which is on the fourth fret on the sixth string so those two parts together I never thought A through love we'd be to the G sharp now this is where it gets a little bit tricky because the bass line comes right in the middle of the next phrase. So it goes, making one as lovely as she. So far the melody and bass have been quite separate. We play the melody first and the bass line. This is the first part of the song where they happen right at the same time. So really take your time with it and I'm just going to point out something about your left hand position or right hand position if you're left handed um, you want to make sure that you switch positions to get ready and anticipate that change so when you're doing uh, 
I recommend landing on your pinky finger and then now here I'm going to use my third finger. Use your third finger to play the bass line. You can use your middle finger, but your third finger is probably the closest one, the most convenient one. And that leaves your first finger to play the rest of the melody. Now, when you land on the F sharp, of course, you can use the first finger, or you can use your thumb. Okay, so I'll play that in one go for you, and I'll play it really slowly, so not only so you can hear how it comes together, but also so you can see how you can um, get an idea of how you can position your fretting hand. So we start off with through love we'd be, and then May. And then we have, but isn't she lovely? So, but, make sure you get that but part. The but. <laughs> Hitting that open second string. We land on B. And that little slide there from the fourth fret, fourth string, the F sharp. Play that low E string. Okay, so I know you guys are really keen to do that bass run at the end, but let me just show you the whole chorus all together very slowly, and then we'll get to that bass run in the next part. So the chorus all together. Okay, so of course we've got to learn that big bass pentatonic run at the end of the chorus, such an iconic and famous part of the song. So I'm going to show you the line correctly with the correct hammer-ons and slides and get it as close as possible to how Stevie Wonder plays it on the record. A lot of people play it correctly notes-wise, but don't get the right slides and hammer-ons and whatnot. Sometimes you'll hear people play it like this. And... Whilst that is correct, it doesn't quite have the the feel and the, the smoothness that the bass run has when you play it on bass guitar. So for acoustic guitar, you can use certain hammer-ons in certain spots to make it really, really smooth so it sounds as close as possible to the original run. Okay, so here's the run in context. So we'll, I'll just play it from the end of the chorus. We'll go, isn't she lovely? So, the run itself starts on the 2nd fret on the 5th string, and we're playing a B major pentatonic run. So we'll play B, going to the C sharp, down to E on the 4th string, F sharp, over to A flat on the 6th, down to B on the 3rd string 4th fret, C sharp on the 6th fret and then we finish up with E on the 2nd string 5th fret okay so remember all this is outlined in the PDF so or you can obviously rewind and pause the video as many times as you need to so here's one way that you can play it using some hammer-ons so we're gonna start with the B and play that with your thumb on your picking hand you're going to hammer on to the C sharp and it's a soft hammer on it's not like it's not like that it's a nice soft gentle bow. do the same going from E to F sharp on the fourth string and play that with your first finger so you're alternating between your thumb and your first finger so now you're going to use the echo from the F sharp to slide to the A flat 
okay and it's got to be nice one swift motion don't go too fast it's got to be swift and smooth so treat it like one sort of flowing line okay like this okay and the key is soft hands you know sometimes when people do hammer-ons and slides they, they feel like they have to do it really fast and really hard soft hands is the key you know the softer you are not lazy but the softer and smoother you are the clearer the sound is going to be so and then we can play the B you can play that with your index finger hammering on to the C sharp and then we finish with the and you want a little bit of a staccato there ba -da -ba. so the second note is short so is the third one Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. So the whole line together, very slowly. Let's go. Okay. And do practice it very slowly to get that. I can't sing it in pitch, it's too low for me. But do it slowly and get it as smooth as you can. And when you play in context, you, it will just run off and you'll just be in this sort of nice sort of flow and trance, you know. If you try to do it too quickly in the beginning, um, you'll rush yourself and you'll miss a few notes and those hammer-ons and slides won't be as strong. So I'll play it in context for you. I'll play the end of the chorus very slowly going into the bass run so you can hear how you can try to put it together yourself. All right, so here we go. Isn't she lovely? Okay, so in this part of the lesson, I'm going to start showing you guys the chord progression and how we can start adding the rhythmical and groovy elements to this arrangement, how you can fill in the space essentially, because at the moment we just have um, an outer shell, you know, the melody and bass, and it's just two lines, so we're going to start looking at chords and different little ways to fill in the gap and add some harmony as well. So. If you're still having a bit of trouble with getting the melody and bass together, I strongly encourage you guys to stick with the first part of this video before you start looking at this. Of course, you can just watch it, indulge yourself, explore, and see what lies ahead. But remember, the melody and the bass forms the core foundation of all fingerstyle guitar and this arrangement in particular. And this is all about explorations. You know, the way I'm going to show you the chords and how to play the chords it's just one way to play it you know there's so many great arrangements and versions of this song by youtubers like adam rafferty and song ha jung and they play it in their own way so the goal of this lesson is to give you guys a good kickstarter and a good foundation so that way you have a strong foundation in the song understand what's going on and then you can start adding your own different flavors and whatnot so Let's have a look at the chord progression as it is. So the verse starts off with a C sharp minor 9, which looks like this. Then we go to an F sharp 7. Now remember, all the chords, the tabs, the finger positions will be on the PDF that you can download for free that comes with this video. So you can have it printed out in front of you. Use the video to see how these chords come together in real life on the fretboard. Um, so after the F sharp, we have a B9 or B7. On this occasion, it's just a B9. Going to a nice open E major. For the chorus, we have an A major 7, which looks like this. Going into a G sharp 7, which is the same shape as the F sharp 7. Okay, so we have the chords. Let's have a look at the verse. And the the groove sounds like this. Okay, nice, really simple groove, really funky, and it leaves enough room so that when you play the melody later on, it doesn't get in the way, you know? Of course, when you play 
um, as a rhythm guitar play in a band, you'll probably do a bit more, but even this is groovy and funky enough. So, how do we play this? So I'm going to start off by, uh, I'd like you to position the C-sharp minor 9, and with your picking hand, you'll play the chord together, so you can play strings 5, 4, 3, 2, give that a nice pluck, and then you're going to do a little slap with your thumb, this percussive slap that is very, um, a big part of fingerstyle guitar, um, and you can do that by just twisting your thumb or your wrist, you know, just gently hitting over the top of the string, and on this occasion, hitting over the top of the fifth string, alright, don't go too hard, you know, just a nice gentle flick of the wrist, like um, Wingardia Leviosa, um, uh, <laughs> like that, so we'll start off by playing the chord, give it a little bump, then a slap, and then another bump. Okay, that doesn't sound very musical because it, I did it very slowly, so if I did it slowly but in a musical sense, it'll sound like this. And another slap. And then you can do that for the F sharp 7. Just move the thumb up to the 6th uh, string, and you can keep your fingers on strings 4, 3, and 2. You know, the melody is going to be mainly on the first string anyways as well, so you don't want to get in the way of the melody later on. Um, okay, so let's do it again. Slap. So, going to B9, you can move the thumb down to the fifth string because that's where the bass note is. And then over to the E major, you can move your thumb up to the sixth string. So, of course, the technical element and the physical element is going to be a bit tricky. Um, just getting used to um, playing this chord and slap and chord and slap, but the groove and the, the feel of it is something that can be quite natural, especially when you listen to the song. Yeah, bang, ding, a ding, ding, a ding, 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 Don't don't really bother counting it because counting it whilst it might help you understand how it looks on paper won't necessarily help you understand how to play it because counting is very mathematical you know you want to be hearing it and singing it and feeling it like a drummer you know that's why we make sounds like bang, ch -dang, instead of one and two and three four of one two, and three four you know the difference you know i mean Find what works best for you. I, I always feel like when you learn, when I learn songs like this, the groove is the most important thing. Not necessarily trying to play it um, according to a metronome. Some people like to use the metronome first and play it and count it before they add in the groove and the all that sort of stuff. So find what works best for you. Okay, so I'm going to give you a brief playthrough of that opening chord progression, and then we'll apply the same thing to the chorus. So, start off with the C sharp minor 9, and we have to the F sharp 7, the B7, B9, to the E major. Go again, C sharp minor 9, F sharp, B9, E major. Go to the chorus, we have an A major 7, G sharp 7, C sharp minor 9 again, to the F sharp 7. Now we have two bars of B9. One more time, and then that bass run at the end. Okay, so we're now getting into the business end, the crux of the arrangement, what you guys have been looking forward to this entire video course. And so we're going to start adding the chords, the melody, the bass, and the little bit of percussion all together. And I just want to say that this is all about getting you guys kick-started in this style of fingerstyle guitar playing. Um, it's a foundational arrangement or a launching pad. You don't want to be playing this 
the entire way you don't want this to be the only way you play isn't she lovely or any arrangement for that matter so in the next part of this video i'll be showing you how you can explore different ways moving forward experimenting with different chord positions techniques and percussive elements and whatnot bass lines but for now this is all about putting everything that we've learned so far together so let me give you a brief playthrough of how it, it all comes together i'll play one verse and one chorus very slowly for you with all the chords and the thumb clicking and then I'll break it down for you. Here we go. Two. Okay, so let's break that down. Let's start off with the opening um, line, which goes, Isn't she lovely? Isn't she wonderful? So you you may have noticed that I didn't play the entirety of the C-sharp minor 9. You know, so this is the C-sharp minor 9. But in the full arrangement, I, ha I didn't play that. I played this. And the reason for that is, if you play that full C sharp minor nine with the melody, you'll have to hold down uh, four strings with a bar, and then the next beat you'll have to kind of lift up your bar to play the open E string. Now, I'm not saying that's not doable, but remember, fingerstyle guitar is about playing all parts of a band in the one arrangement. So you don't have to play everything and anything as long as you imply what's going on. So what I've done here is I've kind of taken the most important parts of the chord and kept the melody and ensured that it still flows quite nicely. So we end up with this. So just adding your pinky on the third string on the fourth fret. So it just becomes a traditional straightforward C sharp minor seven. Okay. So with the click, it sounds like this. to the F sharp 7 and you can play that as we did in the chord part of this video together very nicely very slowly and then going into the B7 going into the E and not much really changes there. I guess the only thing that really changes for the B7 or the B9 is that uh, you'll probably keep that open, second string open. Again, playing the B9 with the C sharp here is not the most practical thing. Like that. You know, you'd have to kind of do a partial bar with your third finger. Um, and again, it's not very practical and not the best thing to do when you're just starting out with this style. And then when you go and play the E chord, or the basic part of the E chord can remain, and you're just playing that open second string as the melody. So let's put that all together really, really slowly. Really important that you try to keep that click going, really trying to keep that groove flowing. Yeah, boom, chicka, the chicka, dum, chicka. So if you're struggling to put that together, I highly recommend that you go back to the chord progression part of this lesson and just practice the chords on their own. You might feel like, oh no, 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 I want to put everything together, you know, this, this is what fingerstyle guitar is all about. But believe me, if you practice just going, doing that, that's going to help everything come together you know there's a reason why everything has been structured um like this up until this point so it's like little stepping stones so once you spend enough time on each part everything just comes together quite nicely 
Okay, so now we're going to move on to the chorus, okay? So we're going to add the A major 7 like this. And you'll notice that I'm not playing the A major like this anymore. And the reason for that is, well, the A bass can be played as an open 5th string. And the melody is on the 7th fret, so, you know, unless if you come around with your thumb, Again, it's not very practical. It is doable, but this is all about playing as smoothly as you can, just getting the groove flowing, um, not being too um, crazy with your finger positions and chord progressions. So we have... And then... Going into the G sharp 7. I muff that up. Let me try that again. Then we have the little tricky part over the C sharp minor seven. I just want to point out something there. You'll notice that again, I'm not playing, I'm not even playing that other C sharp minor that I showed you earlier. It's because the melody is moving quite a lot and there's a lot of melody going. So, you know, at this stage, it's all about just keeping the groove flowing. Um, and if you, if you, Think about having to put some extra fingers down and other chord notes and whatnot, then it gets in the way of you playing the melody to the best of your ability. So, you know, when you can find ways to take out notes to give you the best chance of playing a song as smoothly as possible, do that. As long as it, the melody and the basic idea of the chord remains, you'll be all right. So let me play that for you one more time really slowly. Let's go from the A major. Now we come up to the end, B7, then the bass run. Here's a slow playthrough of the entire arrangement as we have so far to give you guys an idea of how everything comes together without me interrupting you and also something that you can try to play along with as well. Here we go. One, two, one, two. Alright guys, well done for getting through this video lesson so far. This is a tricky arrangement and for some people starting fingerstyle guitar, this will be your first big challenge, but hopefully it's been exciting and it's going to take your guitar playing to the next level. So just before I wrap things up, I want to talk about experimenting and exploring this arrangement and how you can take it further, make it your own, so when you go perform on stage or record your own version for YouTube, 
Um, it's really personal to how you enjoy playing it, and it's really spicy and exciting. So, as I've said throughout the video, this is a foundational arrangement or Kickstarter or launching pad. You really don't want to be playing this arrangement the only way forever. You know, you want to explore different ways to um, make it funky. And one way is to funkify the bass line and add some moving bass lines. Not like a jazz walking bass line, but a similar idea. So, let's take a look at the first verse. We have a C sharp minor going to an F sharp and Really, the bass line is just C-sharp minus F-sharp, like this. Now, what can we do is to add chromatic notes, or on the guitar, just add a couple of notes two frets ahead, sometimes two frets behind, but let's go two frets ahead. Um, the G and G-sharp on the third and fourth fret, which leads to the F-sharp, so it creates a little bit of movement, makes it a little bit funkier, moves the song forward a little bit more. So how can we do that? Um, I'll show you that to you right now. So let's go. See that? Now that's not a original thing. That's not a brand new thing. This is an idea that's been used forever. But it's all about moving the song forward. And you don't always have to use two notes. You can just do one note. So we can go... Just the one bass line will do, and already it just makes a huge difference. You know, so we go from sounding like this. To sounding like this. Okay. Now, you don't really want to be adding it to every single chord change. Every now and then... Um, sounds good so if we I'll show you a way that you can add it to this arrangement and just experiment with what works okay like I said it's not going to work for every single chord but here's a brief playthrough of the song using this idea so you can hear how it comes together here we go Okay, so hopefully you, got, you guys saw where I added the second line. I added it when I went from the G-sharp to the C-sharp minor. So added a little um, C going to the C-sharp. So I'll show you that in slow motion. It will be like this. Okay, A little bit of a stretch there because I'm trying to hold the melody down as the first finger moves around to the C. Okay, but... You don't always have to add chromatic notes. We can also add inversions. So, for example, when we have a look at the ending, um, where it goes, Isn't she lovely, made from love? Um, over the B9, you can change the bass note on the third beat to the F sharp, like this. See that? So if we add the melody, it'll be like, Isn't she lovely? So that's the inversion of the chord. If you're not sure what an inversion is, it's basically a chord that's been flipped around so the bass note is no longer the root note. Okay? You can do this with um, the opening part as well. So we can go... See that? So I've gone from the C sharp to the G sharp just by moving the third finger up. that beautifully connects to the chromatic line that you can have for the F sharp. And then we can 
add it to the end as well there. So there's a way that you can explore the arrangement to make it super, super funky. Um, there are other ways to do it as well, but I'm going to leave it at that. And hopefully, guys, this has been exciting for you. It's a great song to learn. It's so fun to play, not just as a solo fingerstyle arrangement, but in a band as well. So maybe if you're doing duets um, with other acoustic guitar players or electric guitar players, this is a great arrangement to play. Such a great song for jam sessions. So, hope you guys have enjoyed that video lesson. Get playing. I'd love to see your versions. So send me your versions. Post them on YouTube. Um, tag me on Instagram. Instagram, and I'll see you guys in the next one.